Oh, I better do my screens better. Um, everybody hear me and see my screen okay? People coming in, Terry, if you can take care of that. Uh, yeah, so welcome everybody uh, to another London Excel meetup. Um, today is about the let function, and uh, we're meant to have Roger Govier uh, speaking, uh, as you can see on the slide there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, got a message a couple of hours ago that he's... Uh, his health is not good, um, so he's not going to be able to. He's not going to be able to make it. Um, but it was quite close to the time, so I didn't really want to cancel it. Uh, so the plan is that I am going to attempt to do some let function things. Uh, so please go easy on me, uh, and maybe something else. And um, we might have a bit of a discussion about, you know, about these new functions and and kind of take it from there, really. So it's a bit of a kind of last minute change around. Uh, I don't want to cancel the meetup that late. You know, we can still put something together and go ahead. Uh, and hopefully Roger will, will feel better soon and uh, maybe we can get him on uh, before the year is out. Uh, yes, so that is that. Um, usual talk before we start. We do have uh, two more uh, meetups that are scheduled. Uh, so, you know, bi-weekly at the moment as it's virtual, and when it goes back to some kind of normality, we'll, you know, we'll make a decision as to how we're going to play this. Um, but 10th of November, uh, we have Wim Hopkins, and that is a 12 o'clock session. So it's a lunchtime session for those in Europe, and obviously different for those of you all around the world. Uh, but it's different to the standard timing. So, you know, if you can still make it, depending where it is in your zone, then brilliant. Uh, but the time has been adjusted because uh, for those who know Win, he'll be coming in from Australia. Uh, as Danielle knows, he's like completely upside down. Uh, so uh, we're about to switch things around a bit to accommodate, which hopefully won't um, be too bad for everybody. Uh, then we're back to our normal time of six o'clock uh, for us here. And we have Oakley, who's on the call at the moment. You'll probably see him uh, showing us how to customize Excel to work for us rather than having the standard one we all get given and most of us just do that. <laughs> we might add two buttons to the toolbar and then that's it. <laughs> Customised. Uh, flash fill and uh, <laughs> paste values and then we crack on. Um, so hopefully we'll see uh, a lot more uh, in regards to how we can change that. Different settings, you know, customising ribbons. I don't know what he's going to do. I'll let him do it. I'm talking rubbish, it'd be much better than what I do. Okay, uh, yeah, and that's two weeks after, so two in November, action pack November. And that is that. Uh, normally, I get to switch over to someone else at this point and just crack open a beer and watch. Um, but I'm gonna take us through some, some let function stuff, if you can uh, suffer me for a little while. So, uh, you know, this was completely put together uh, about an hour ago quickly. So I have no idea how long this is going to last. It might be about 30 minutes, maybe. And, uh, and then maybe we'll break into a bit of a discussion about, you know, whether you guys have used these formulas and what your maybe opinion is on this stuff. Uh, because I know formulas can divide opinions at all times. Uh, obviously, Oz is on the call now. The index match V lookup debate is most well known. <laughs> Don't want to stoke his fires, but um, but the same with things like let, you know. So uh, so let's do this. Um, remember with, yeah, it's, my, it's indeed Eric. Um, and I've got the kids in the back room as well. Uh, I've just put them in the cupboard for now. So I've got to done quick to get them out. That's a joke. Don't <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't joke about things like that. So hopefully they won't uh, break in at some point. Uh, now I've got to do something myself, uh, which all wasn't planned. Uh, if there's any questions or anything, obviously the chat window is 
uh, active. It's pretty quiet at the moment in there, to be honest. So any questions throughout the day, uh, feel free to keep that active. I've got it on my right, so I might be able to see it myself. But, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of Excel experts on this call, so feel free to help each other out. Uh, save me a job. It's always welcome. So, uh, let function. Uh, if you want to throw in the chat to keep it active, have, how many of you have used this let function before? Or do you have it? How many 365 users have you got on this call? Yeah, I've seen, I'll speak about it. Cool, got some 365ers. Ah, oh, Martin. <laughs> okay, so quite, you know, there's a few 365ers, uh, a lot of no's to having used it though. And I think, I think I only got the let function, I don't know, maybe four weeks ago. I suddenly saw it appear in my uh, like normal 365 Excel. Um, you know, it's been in the insiders for a while for those who use that, which I know some on the call do. But I only got it, yeah, about four weeks ago, I think it came in. So it's pretty fresh. Um, so I know a lot of you may not have it. Yeah, yeah, Chris, that's what I was Okay, so um, three examples of the let function. And then I'm hoping to do a, a little bit of a talk on uh, the switch function as well. So create some more debate. So to do some let function, um, kind of simple one to start with, if you will, and then maybe we'll expand a bit more. If I just click in the at cell B2 for the moment and do some kind of chat on this, <laughs> if you can hear that. Um, so this is the let function. And reasons for using this let function is that they have the ability to potentially make your formulas uh, more meaningful, uh, more descriptive, and uh, you know to kind of shorten them because they give us the ability to. I'll let them do a little description there on screen if you can read that. Uh, it's all zoomed in for. Oh, it's a big description, isn't it? Um, but they give us the ability to create variables uh, inside our formula. So the scope of the variable is only available inside that one formula. Uh, those of you who've done some DAX where creating variables is quite commonplace in formulas there, whereas in Excel, we've, we've never really done this before. Uh, or anyone with some background in VBA it will all be quite familiar stuff. But we can create these variables, assign ranges or formula results or, or whatnot uh, to these variables, and then we can use them again and again in our formulas. So it's only really going to be useful if you're creating big formulas, like complex formulas, where maybe you're doing the same calculation or you're using the same value multiple times. So in a simple example here, uh, let me zoom out on that. I've got 10% in cell D1, 20% in E1. So we've got a smaller discount, let's pretend it's a discount, and a, a larger discount. And in cell D2, with the number 50, is our target value. And I've got some pretend numbers, which I quickly uh, knocked up. <laughs> and what we're going to do is create this let function. We're going to assign those three cells to these variables, and then we're going to use them in a basic uh, kind of if function. So I've got this let function. Uh, if I zoom in, we can see that it asks you for potentially multiple variables. So it asks for the name, then the name value. So the name of the variable and then what you're going to assign to it, which they're referencing as a, a kind of value there. And then you have the opportunity of doing your calculation, your expression, or creating more variables. Uh, we have three variables here. As I said, it was simple, and we're creating three variables. Now, I'm in the cell here, but what I might do is just pop up to the formula bar up here. So I'm thinking of breaking these formulas over multiple lines, uh, just to make it more descriptive, uh, make it a little bit easier on the eye, rather than a nice kind of linear formula. Uh, to, to start with, if I do Alt Enter to break onto a new line, and let's imagine that 10% in cell D1, uh, I'm going to name it small, 
So we're typing whatever we want to name it. We put in a comma, we'll see it move on to name value. And that is going to be cell D1, uh, which I'll make absolute because I have plans to copy this formula down. And then going to put into a comma and to make this nice and easy to read, uh, we don't need to do this, but I'm doing Alt Enter to break it onto a separate line so that it's easy to distinguish our variables. Uh, this one's going to be large, I fought so hard over these names. And it's going to be that cell E1. Let's fix that bad boy. And then one more, if we go to another cell down, let's call this one target. And that one's going to be D2. And uh, I'll fix that. And then if we break onto one more line, because why the heck not? Uh, this will be the calculation, as they refer to it. And if you can see this okay, over here it's asking calculation or a fourth name. And I could keep going with these variables. So for a simple calculation, I'm going to do an if function. And the logical test will be if that number there, cell A2, is greater than or equals, and we'll start using these variables. So it's greater than or equals the target. At and then I'll put in my comma. The value, if true, is that I'm going to multiply the number by, uh, if it's greater or equals the target, we'll do that by large. And then one more time, A2 to multiply by small. Uh, things you might be noticing, as I'm typing, you might see that small is coming, well, I've got a function small there with the FX icon, and then the variable, that I created or the name that I created. Uh, the icon is very similar. I'm not sure I'm happy about that. It's so similar, isn't it? But that's, that's our name, that's our variable. So they come up in the list, just like defined names do and tables do and functions do, uh, which is nice. Uh, close bracket for if, and then we need one more close bracket for that let function. And running this uh, is probably no surprise that 56 provides 20% of that. And if we copy that down, we've got the right percent. And this example is, is not pretending to be an amazing example of let in action because we created those variables, but then I only use them once. I've used target once, large once, small once. So like, what was the point? It's actually bigger than what it would have been if I just used the cells. Uh, so it's a starting example. If I was going to use them multiple times, then that's a, a slightly more meaningful and exciting example. However, something it does do, I guess, is make the formula more meaningful. So the way I've used it here is similar to how a lot of you might have used defined names before, that we can write formulas or just refer to cells in defined names, and we can use those names in formulas. So we can use words like tax and target and this kind of stuff, uh, making the formulas easier to read. Obviously, name ranges will be available in the scope of the workbook or whatever we set. These are only available in the formula, uh, this formula. So to repeat what I said a moment ago, not a particularly amazing example, but it's a nice, like, why would you do that? But um, a nice introduction example to, to using this function and, and how we can use it or how we can write it. How are we doing, guys? So help out in the, the questions if I can. I can't honestly say I've used let that much before. I'm <laughs> just flying into the deep end. Uh, yeah, nice surprise, Paul, all right? You get to listen to my lovely tones. All right, should we see a more exciting example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whoa, look at this. Uh, so we have a sheet called variance. And I haven't had my dinner yet, so this is probably a bad choice of sheet. Um, yeah, never mind. That's, that's my problem, not yours. <laughs> uh, a little bit of work's already been done here uh, to save us a little bit of hassle. Um, obviously, this is a spreadsheet already had. I'm just trying to get things going. Uh, but we're going to look at editing the formula, which I thought might not be a bad idea either. 
So we've got this kind of dynamic labeling on the chart going, it looks very nice, I know. And in this variance, uh, this column D, uh, that's where we have a formula going on. And whoa, look at that formula. That is one heck of a formula. I love it. And we're gonna try and use let to simplify it a little bit. Let me try and zoom out on this. I can't even fit it in, it's such a monster. Uh, so we've got a switch function there. I'm a huge fan of switch function. Uh, we've also got three text functions I'm a big fan of. And the thing I'm gonna use here, the kind of culprit for some let action is, where are you? Is the variant stuff. We have this little formula here, which is used twice. It's only used twice. But in another scenario, maybe I'd use it six times. Who knows what we're doing? But in this one uh, that I quickly grabbed, it's only used twice. But we could assign that to a variable once and then just use a meaningful name. So it would make the formula easy to read and all that. So it would have a normal name, but also we're only calculating it once, which is surely a benefit. You know, not much better than twice, but uh, surely a benefit as well. So uh, if I jump up to the formula bar, so I can just break it over this formula like we did before. I'm going to talk about switch in a bit if anybody's new to that one as well. And I'll start with the let function at the start. Uh, so we bring up this little box, which I'm also a massive fan of. Anybody who comes on my training hears me uh, ramble on about this little box constantly. <laughs> um, as it always tells us where we are at any given point. Uh, we're now going to assign those uh, variables or just one here, which is for that variance. So I'm going to call it, uh, I guess I'll call it variance, shall I? I could have shortened that to VAR or something, whatever works for you. That comma will bring us on to the name value one. And I'm going to nick that formula. Let's grab that, all using tables here, guys. So these are our structured referencing of a table, uh, which you might well be familiar with. Uh, just saying in case anyone's not. Big fan of table use too. Maybe we can chat about that after. Um, so uh, we've got it named variance. I'm assigning that formula to it. So it's not just a cell range now or a cell reference. Uh, it is a formula. Obviously, this could be any formula. It could be a VLOOKUP. It could be, I don't know, sum, whatever. It's this formula here. And you can see I'm in this calculation or the opportunity for more variables. And we've got a switch function. All I've got to do now is use that variable. Uh, so if it's greater than or equals, blah, 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 blah. Here, no, is that it? Where am I? That's uh, that, isn't it? Um, so here is that uh, formula and I'm going to replace it with variance. Remember it comes up in the list. So I could just double click that save my embarrassing typing and then we'll hunt down the other one where are you we'll grab that uh, variance again and unfortunately it doesn't quite fit on my screen um but you know big impact with the size of that formula shortening you know three column references and a few brackets and stuff into one word uh, if I put one closed bracket at the bottom, I have to click on the end for that, uh, to close out the let function. And nothing changes. It all works hunky-dory like a minute ago. But to repeat, in this scenario, you know, we've, we've kind of set the stand out up front and said, right, this is the deal. This is your variance calculation. And then from that point onwards, we could just use the variance. So maybe uh, if you're of the opinion, um, this simplifies the formula, it might make it easier for us and you know, our colleagues and our customers and our managers or whoever else to, to read and interact with this formula to see that word rather than you know, a little other calculation in there. Uh, and maybe, you know, a more elaborate case, it would speed it up because we've shortened the amount of calculations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are handling the chat, all good. Okay, uh, I have one more example. 
Uh, happy to answer any questions on that, or hopefully people are taking care of that. Uh, I have uh, three more sheets at the bottom. I have London for obvious reasons, uh, Toronto uh, for probably obvious reasons. We have a, a kind of an interest, and there's probably a few people from Toronto on this call. Uh, and then I have Planet Morag, which is a Guardians of the Galaxy reference. Um, completely nothing to do with Excel, but there you go. And the plan here is that um, we're going to write a formula to return the name of the sheet into a cell. It's something I did a video on my YouTube, like back in like 2012 or something about. <laughs> so I was frantically looking at my YouTube videos, going, give me a good example of let, <laughs> trying to see any that I did with big formulas. And I thought, oh, that, that would do as an example. Um, and we're going to recreate it here, but have the let function like, maybe simplify it. Uh, so to start with, uh, if I wanted to return the uh, sheet name from this cell, uh, what cell, what sheet am I on? I'm on Planet Morag at the moment. Okay. So I've wanted to do it here. Uh, ignoring let for the moment, um, uh, we could use the write function uh, to take some characters from the end of a, a string. And then we're going to use a function called cell, uh, which maybe a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, tells you what it does there. If not, uh, returning information about uh, a cell. Uh, we are going for location because uh, uh, we want to grab the, the kind of path of this file and then take the kind of sheet name from the end. Uh, so when we do the cell function, we've got lots of options for information to take out of it. And I'm going to choose the file name. And that would typically return, you know, that whole path. So, you know, C colon backslash, you know, OneDrive desktop folder, all this malarkey. Uh, then we'd have the name of the Excel workbook and the Excel workbook, and maybe I'll just do this rather than talk about it. Uh, name of the Excel workbook, if I double click that, I'll just pick a cell for a moment. Uh, let's go for A1, why not? Who wouldn't click on A1 in that opportunity? Um, it returns this, whoa, that looks terrible. Uh, but the point being for this is we've got the sheet name at the end, it's the very last thing, uh, hence the use of the write function. And it follows the name of the workbook, and the workbook has these square brackets around it. So we're going to target that, that close in square bracket as our way of identifying the sheet. Uh, let me get rid of that and go again. Uh, what am I doing? Right. Uh, so when it asks for the text to kind of extract from, that's where we're bringing in this cell function. And I'm just going to rattle this out for now. Uh, maybe I'll check, pick on E1 this time, you know, share the love. Uh, I could choose still, I still do A1, by the way. Uh, comma, number of characters. Now this gets a bit more tricky because obviously Planet Morag has got more characters than London and uh, Toronto's got one more. If I can do that very quickly. So they're not the same. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to use the len function to find out how many characters are in the entire string. And I guess the point you might be noticing here and where the len function is going to come and maybe save us when we use such a, such a word is that I'm going to repeat myself. So, okay, this string. Now, typically, I guess the way people would normally do this, uh, you, you could just write it in the formula like I am, but the other typical use will be helper columns, if you call them that that would use these, these cells or these other columns in a different scenario uh, to store these kind of intermediary calculations, uh, probably on another sheet, so we can hide that sheet and tuck all our calculations away and be tidy. Um, and then we can use those. And it's just another way, you know, the reason we do that is just to keep our formulas simple. And I'm a big fan of simple, so I use helper columns a lot. It may be exciting and Good to show off when you've got a monster formula but quite often especially when you're giving stuff to other people it's easier just to break it down into steps you know that calculates that that calculates that you know because you don't always have to think about you know speed you know sometimes you do if you've got huge workbooks most of the time it's probably not that big and you just want to find the uh, most useful way rather than the uh, the greatest way if that makes sense especially other people who are working with it 
Right, what am I doing? I haven't closed my LEM function. I bet you're all screaming in the chat box, aren't you? He hasn't closed LEM. Um, so I'm going to close down the LEM function. What am I doing? I'm doing this completely wrong. I want to take away. So we've got the number of characters. <laughs> I literally did this just before. Uh, number of characters in uh, that string. We're going to subtract. We're going to find the uh, closing bracket for reasons that I mentioned before. Within text, what do you know? We're going to use that bad boy again. Uh, not you, just you. Let's paste that in. Run that screen. It's always good when you run out of screen. Uh, oh, actually, I'm not going to because I'm done. But I'm going to close off that find function. So find that closing bracket. That would indicate the end of the workbook. And we know the sheet's name is coming next. Got to close off right. And fingers crossed, that brings back uh, Planet Morag. And if I was going to use it on the other sheets, I'd get London and I'd get Toronto. Uh, plan is obviously to talk about the let function. So if I move into the formula bar to break it up nicely, rather than one like, just line of formula, which is not always that easy to read. Uh, then just before write, uh, we could put in the uh, let function, uh, start breaking this over other lines and set up our uh, variable. So maybe I'll call it uh, ADD for address. And I'll take that formula I've already done three times. But as you guys saw, I just copied it really. So now it's only mentioned once, comma, break onto another line. And then we can just change the references to the formula to ADD. And it's going to drastically shorten the formula and maybe make it more readable as well to, to everybody. You know, not just for us. You'll often have to think about other people as well. I know we don't want to, but you know, sometimes, sometimes I think about others. Uh, and close that off. Uh, cross your fingers, cross your toes. Ooh, still works. Oh, that was exciting. Yay. And then I should be able to go into there, uh, take a copy of that if I needed it. And uh, fingers crossed, pop over to Toronto. Just a little trip to Toronto from Planet Morag. And uh, dump that wherever I want and things back to Toronto. Uh, so that time we used a variable three times, you know, add, add and add uh, for address. Uh, just to really shorten that formula. And this is what the let function is all about. It's just trying to make your formulas more readable. Um, yeah, and simple and smaller. And if I'm, if I'm honest, I was quite looking forward to hearing what Roger had to say about it because um, as long as the let function's been out, like I've barely looked at it before today. <laughs> I've only really looked at it properly because I knew I was going to come in and do this. So I knew of it. I've seen a couple of videos. I've seen Oz present on it. But I've never really bothered with it myself. I've never really been that interested. I thought, oh, like, do I really need that? Is it that important? So I was quite interested to hear what Roger had to say, because I think he's a fan of it. I was going to say, like, well, why do you love it so much? <laughs> what makes it so much better than naming areas or using helper columns? Or maybe just writing a better formula. Maybe you're doing it wrong if you've got to use that variable that many times. Maybe there's a better approach with maybe Power Query or, or VBA or something. Um, so I guess there is a bit of a debate around it, which is why I thought we might have a discussion when I finished yapping, because maybe maybe some of you are big fans of it, or or maybe not. Maybe you think this is all a little bit pointless. It'd be good to hear what I guess people have to say. Um, okay, yeah, we've got a, some Toronto people in the house. <laughs> okay, so. Done half an hour there, I didn't expect to talk that long. Maybe I talk too much. But I'm just going to switch files because I didn't really really, you know, think how long I was going to talk for, like uh, off the cuff on this topic. So I thought I'd quickly throw in a little bit, and it is only three examples, it's only a little bit, but on a function called switch. Because I think that's another function that kind of goes under the radar a little bit. And a lot of people have like not heard of or not used, um, which is quite crazy, really. Uh, I think it came out in 
2016. Uh, it might be 2019. Uh, maybe someone can correct me if they know in the uh, in the chat. It was either 16 or 19. I think it might be 19 now. But anyway, it's um it's not limited to just 365. So it has got a little bit more global appeal than things like Let and XLOOKUP and Filter, which are so new. You know, we can't really use them too much because people we talk to probably don't have them. I'm um, going to have to give it a few years. Switch is a little bit more outside of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me put my salesman hat on. I'll go get my tie. Um, got three examples. Here we go. So for the first example here, um, I'm going to start with an if function. Let me build up to switch like a good soap opera would. We love our soaps here in the UK. <laughs> I don't, but other people do. Um, so we're going to assign a different fee, three different fees, because we have three different grades, platinum, gold, and silver. So maybe I'll do a good old if function. Number one, if it was a popularity contest of logical functions. Good news is it's not a popularity contest. Um, yes. Uh, so logical test is uh, if that is, I've got a table going on here, guys, uh, is equal to platinum, you watch me make a mistake here. Then it's going to be 90 pound. Otherwise, or nested if going on. Let's test it again. And say if it's equal to gold, I'm going to run out of screen here. Uh, let's say it's 70, and then we'll test it again. I guess there's one other instance, but let me test it again. Uh, where am I going? Uh, equal to silver. Uh, let's say it's going to be 50 pound and anything else. Like, I don't know, no match. And close a free. Uh, so ripping it out quick. I hope I haven't made a mistake typing. But that's your classic nested if. Uh, probably in Excel generally, not necessarily on this meetup. But, you know, generally speaking, when you go around to different workplaces and you help people in forums and that, this is probably what most people would do. Um, I'm going to show off the switch function. But a lot of people in this call... Uh, probably also know that we can do ifs, which I'm pretty sure did come out in 2016. And uh, maybe just do a lookup. We could create a table of platinum, gold, silver with the fees and just do a, a V lookup or an X lookup or an index match or you know, take your pick. A filter, like there's enough lookup functions. Um, and they're probably the best approach overall. But just running this at the moment, it'll copy down because it's a table and tables are awesome. Uh, and this does a job, there's nothing wrong with it, but obviously I'm writing if multiple times, I'm referring to the grade multiple times, it's not pretty. And this is why things like letter out is to try and tidy up kind of formulas, uh, like grade and stuff. Now we could maybe make that a little bit better and use an ifs function, that will improve it a tiny bit. Um, I can't remember how to do ifs now. Uh, so. You know, I could just ask if that is equal to uh, platinum uh, and then put in our uh, comma and that will be a 90 comma. And then the advantage here as we go into another test is that I don't have to keep saying if bracket, if bracket, you know, three brackets on the end. It's all one function, uh, which is an advantage. However, something I am doing here is I'm still saying gold constantly. Uh, not gold, sorry, grade constantly. I keep having to refer to grade. There's the third time I've referred uh, to grade. You know, no big hardship, but surely there's a better way of doing it. One bracket on the end, though. Ah, what did I do? Oh, I didn't put price. Uh, uh, what did I say? 70? Uh, 50? Oh, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea of messing it up. Uh, but I'm still referring to, to grade here kind of multiple times. Oh, whatever I've done, I can't bother. But the ultimate idea here is that we're going to use switch. That's what I'm building up to. You see how much I don't do ifs. Why would you when you've got switch around, hey? I've just forgotten all about it. Um, so switch function, uh, quite similar to choose in some ways for people who've used that before. 
It does look more than that, but outside the box, it's similar to choose. So it asks for the uh, expression kind of upfront. So I can just mention grade uh, once. I don't have to keep saying grade, 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 like I did before. And then we just ask for the value and the result of that. So putting in a comma, I can now just put in platinum. I don't have to do any of this um, like grade equals, grade equals, grade equals. And just keep going. I could put in either the default value, like the, the kind of if false, or hit it with some more values and results. Uh, so gold in, 70, and then one more for silver, which would be 50, and then hopefully the default one on the end. Hopefully I've not made a mistake there as I try and speed through. So the idea is that, yeah, I'm not opening loads of functions, like the first nested if uh, and all those brackets. I've just got this all in one function. And compared to ifs, oh, I messed it up. Um, we've only got one mention of grade. Um, yeah, just going to glance over that and we get our answer. So when it comes to logical functions, you know, that's definitely the, the, the shortest and simplest approach, uh, which is why I thought it would come in quite nice on this this meetup because that's why let is here is to make our formulas easier. Uh, and some people don't know that things like switch are an easier one than nested ifs. Now, as I've said already, doing a lookup formula, like an X lookup or a V lookup, is probably even better. You know, it'll be half that size, that formula, um, and easier to change in the future because things like 90 net would be in a cell that people can change. But if we forget about them <laughs> and think about logical functions, I think switch is, you know, number one by, by a mile in what it's capable of. Uh, moving on to another example, if I can rip through these, what a lot of people don't seem to realise as well when you look at switch out of the box, uh, because it is very similar to choose, for those people who know choose, which I think is actually a lookup formula. Um, it looks very similar to it. So the way I used it there with text like platinum, silver, is what I think some people think is the only way. Um, but uh, we've got numbers here. Maybe I want to assign a different discount if they're eight or more years or four or more years. So if I use a switch, uh, if I want to test against you know, something numeric and say, is it greater than or equals eight or greater or equals four, uh, the trick is to put true as the expression. Uh, that's the little nugget that you know, people should be told immediately, but uh, depends what you read. Uh, then we can go and do our uh, conditions. Uh, so fingers crossed, if I'm not messing this up, um, I can uh, reference the cell and ask if it's greater than or equals eight. It's now I am referring to the cell uh, compared to before. Uh, the result will be, I don't know, 15%, let's pretend. Uh, comma. Reference it again, uh, greater than or equals four. Uh, maybe it's 10%. And then I'll put in a default value of no percent and close that off. Uh, so two tests and testing against something numeric, asking if it's larger or equal. Uh, the trick if you're going to do that is to put true up, the, up front. And it's a, it's a tiny formula there. And the job is done, 10% for them. On before there. Um, final example I've got here um, is with other functions. So this is the grand finale. Ooh. Um, yeah, because did I do that? Yes, I did do a formula. Okay, anyway, my example is that um, we've got some dates in column A. And the idea is that we're going to pay people a different hourly wage, depending what the day of the week is. If it's Sunday, X amount, Saturday, X amount, Monday to Friday, uh, a much smaller amount. Um, so we're going to bring switch in. And for the expression, we're going to use a formula. So don't think I've done a formula in the previous two. I just kind of referred to a cell or something like that. Uh, but we can bring in uh, weekday. I always get weekday and workday mixed up. 
but I believe it's weekday. Yeah, returns a, a number which relates to the day of the week of a date. So if I do weekday, the serial number, wouldn't it be great if they actually helped people by giving it a nice word there? Most people have got no idea what a serial number is. Why don't you just say date, for Christ's sake? Um, but anyway, we'll click on the date, uh, put in a comma, drops down the list, so we get to pick what works for us. And um, I'm going to go for number two, where Monday is the first day of the week, and it finishes on Sunday. So obviously Saturday and Sunday is a six and a seven in this example. A close bracket, that is the expression. I can just mention that once. I haven't got to mention it lots of times, so I can an if function. Well, if I did do that, I could use let to mention it once. That switch is going to do that anyway, so I don't need it. Um, comma. So value, uh, if it is uh, seven, so Sunday, then maybe we'll multiply the hours by whatever, I don't know, 16 pound. Uh, comma, uh, if it is six, then we'll multiply the hours by 14. And if it's neither of those, I'll just go for a default value here. Uh, then we're going to multiply the hours uh, by no, no, 10. And then close it off, uh, run with that. And this is my last little demo switch. Uh, just to show that we can put a formula, any formula in that expression. And we don't have to keep repeating ourselves. Uh, which we would if we did an if or an ifs. Um, yeah, and I can just mention what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, I wasn't doing a, uh, a like a logical test in a way that greater than this here. I can just mention the six and, and kind of get away with it. And that is what I, I kind of <laughs> scraped together um, while I was doing the kids' dinner. <laughs> Multitasking, like they say men cannot do, they do not know. All right, how are we doing, team? Yeah, uh, Alan. yeah just uh, I'll stop sharing for a moment. So I don't know if there's any kind of outstanding questions in the chat, but, but the plan was that I'd maybe do a little bit on the let function because I didn't want to let people down who were you know, who had maybe organised their day to attend this. You know, I didn't really want to cancel it. And then I'll put in a bit of switch because I didn't know how long it was going to take. But then I thought it might be nice um, just to kind of open the floor to you guys, really. And I don't know if anybody wants to step forward. And I don't know if you've got a, a good opinion on the let function or, or if you want to come in and explain why you think it's a load of rubbish. Right. I don't know if there's any takers. Thought we'd have a bit of a, a discussion about it. Alan, I'm curious. Why didn't you just put at hours outside the formula and you'd have it once rather than three times? So he said that the first bit, don't put the... Put the at hours outside the formula once instead of three times within the formula. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by outside the, the formula? Well, it will be at hours times switch, and then you've got. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, sorry, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rather than repeating it, yeah, we could have put it. Yeah, as you've just said there. Yeah, to put the hours multiplied by and get switch to return the. Uh, the rate. Yeah, good idea. Uh, and that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, how can we, obviously my one worked, but how could we simplify it further um, for us and for others? Yeah, good stuff, John. Cheers. Thank you. Good to see you as well. A London nice to be Alan, there was a question from Martin. Does letter switch slow down the calculation time? Uh, no, I think I think it's speed it up. 
I think let makes, you know, in, in more complex cases than what I did. <laughs> it's going to make no difference in what I did there. But I think in more complex cases, the idea is that the let function, um, yeah, is actually quicker as well. And I'm assuming switches. I don't know 100% on that. But. Well, there's, a, there's a question about case sensitivity with let. Okay. In with the variables. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it's case sensitive, no. Because uh, I think in the uh, the second one, uh, what did I do? Because I think when I when I set up the variable, um, I put them with a like proper case uh, with mm -hmm. a capital to start, and then when I was using them. I'm lazy, so I didn't bother. I just typed in lowercase and let Excel Correct. figure it out. Yeah, Alan, I actually tried that and I put it in with um, proper case. And then okay. I went I went back into the function. I went back into the formula and I actually changed one of them to all lowercase. Right. And it instantly changed the other one. So just like it does in VBA, if you use a variable and then you use it with a different case, it changes the first instance back to what you've now just defined it as. Okay. Well, what what happened with me was it gave me an error because I went and I did name and name two, and then I changed name two to lowercase name, and it no nope, can't do it. So were you using the the same variable in two different locations? Yeah. Yeah. So then, but you, with you've different got... case sensitivity. Okay. With the different cases. And it worked when they were different cases. No, no, it didn't work. Oh, okay. It gave me an error saying, yeah. you can't, you already have this variable. Yeah. So what they call an ambiguous variable. Okay. <laughs> oh, are you muted, Oz? No, I'm not muted. I don't oh, think. I thought you were talking then, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you're a fan of the let function, is that right, Oz? Yes, yes, very much so. Yes. Yeah, especially with um what what um in my video I used it to calculate tea commissions and coffee commissions. Uh so I made two cases, right? There's a situation where you've got like really long pieces of a formula that you reuse so you can shorten it that way to what recycle pieces. And then there is when you got a bunch of different things, right? So if I have one way to calculate coffee commissions and another way for tea commissions, um, I can say, let coffee equal this and then tea equal that. And then it's easier to then read or troubleshoot if something goes wrong. Hmm. Cool. Patrick uh, Patrick is asking name were name and name two in the same let. So no, name and name two would be two different things, but name all caps and name with just a capital N, let would treat them as the same thing and say, no, you can't do that. Just looking over some of the comments and really looked here. Yeah, I see uh, Shuka is saying what um, John did. Cool. Um, any? Um... Yeah, Marcus say yeah. Uh, Marcus talking about helper columns, <laughs> right? Um... Yep. Yes. Yeah, we could. Hold on, hold on. Yep. Don't scare me, I. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. so we could use letting instead if you wanted to. You know, I don't know whether that's much better than helper columns or not. I don't know. Sometimes it's nice. But uh, it's definitely an alternative, though. Um, so any other takers? I don't know if anyone's got an opinion on a, either let or switch. Are there many people on the call who use defined names? The people who use it on names in their formulas? I think there was actually a question um, from Omo 
what's the advantage of using the let function versus the name? Yeah. Um, names. Yeah. In your opinion, Alan? Like naming <laughs> a cell, like naming a cell or a range. Yeah. yeah. I hate that shit. I hate it with a passion. I hate it. Because why? Because when things go wrong, now I got to go up in the goddamn ribbon and into all these submenus to figure out what is this referring to? Put it in the sheets. You can't be, I don't, I don't want to scurry around like a hamster. Oh. <laughs> That's that passion we need. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess there's a difference. That I guess if you use let, it's within the formula, and people don't have to go looking elsewhere. Right, yeah. Because um, we're not rodents, we're not squirrels, <laughs> having to go trying to find our nuts back in the forest somewhere. I love the way you're saying that as you eat something crunchy. It's excellent. No, persimmon, <laughs> dried persimmon, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess a, a, another... Patrick. Now, see, Patrick. Patrick is trying to push my buttons here. See, <laughs> Patrick. I deliberately do I'll not go, use. I go back off. I, yeah, you're good, man. I, I I don't use shortcuts. That space in my head that I would rather use for something else. I don't want to. And then you press the wrong keyboard shortcut and wind up somewhere you don't want to be. No, I use Control C, Control V. Mm -hmm. If I want to undo, I know that's Control Z, but I hit that arrow. Boop. <laughs> right there. I don't have to think about. I remember what the back, what the undo looks like. God, Ozzy, you you really are holding yourself back there. Go <laughs> no, I'm not. I've been at this for 20 years. I'm doing well. Oh, you are. <laughs> I just are. I just recorded two more courses for LinkedIn. <laughs> I think for those yeah. like yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just think how extra awesome ours will be if, if you use short <laughs> The only problem is that nobody would then understand what he was doing. But there. <laughs> 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 yeah, I might do something I'm ashamed of myself for. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> Let me put off by Oz team. If you want to come in and say that you love named ranges, you go and do it. I'm really sorry, Oz, but I'd be on Patrick's team for this one. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Be on Patrick's team. Do it. Do it. Because the ultimately, we're trying to get this world's data clean. We're all on the same team here. Y'all use the awful methods, and I'll use the good methods. Right? But, but we're doing the same thing. We're getting there. Right? <laughs> cool. I mean, personally, I'm, I am a fan of name ranges myself, but I get the... Uh, <laughs> get a difference um as i mentioned i don't really see a huge benefit to let it's nice but obviously name ranges you can use outside that formula as well you can use it as many formulas as you want uh, you get a name manager just to list everything yeah and and i lean toward Let's a look you only need it there and and then so much with um with power query and it joins it's, I'm skipping over a whole lot of that stuff, you know, because XLOOKUP is great, but when I can do a, yeah, some kind of a join, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, indeed, yeah, especially when you've got big, big data, then just in emerging a power query is so much quicker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. It's all great tools. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have options. You know, we're not all yeah. built the same, are we? We all we all eat our eggs differently. So some people don't eat eggs. Right, yeah. Crazy people. <laughs> I don't hang around with those people. <laughs> uh, any <laughs> Uh, any other thoughts, team? Anyone else want to put uh, their two pence in, as we as we say? Two pence, yes. Two pennies in. Who's got two pence? 
<laughs> doesn't get you anything nowadays, mate. So I haven't used let at all in um in an Excel spreadsheet, but I do use it in DAX. And it's very much the same in DAX. If you know it in Excel, it, the knowledge transfer yeah. straight over to when you're using DAX. But I don't get why they call it a variable because it's mm. not a variable. It's a fine <laughs> value. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm not on the naming team. So that's, it's not called a defined value. So, but yeah, I, not, I really it's don't not a value, but it's, it a it's variable. What, what did you call it? A defined value. Okay. Like it doesn't change once you set it, that's it. But you can set it to be the value of a relative reference, and it might then change. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you win. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good that opening. Yeah, you see, uh, I haven't. You like I said, I haven't used it in Excel, so. <laughs> in the um, I mean, obviously, I called it a variable in this session, but in the like let documentation do they actually call it a variable i'm know. not sure but i've constantly heard it being referred to as a variable in different yeah. videos and on different blog posts and stuff like that but i'm not sure about the official microsoft documentation no they call it a value mm. just so you've a got value. name you've got name one and then value one so it's my fault paula you can uh... <laughs> john spain is virtually going throw it. something at me john <laughs> <laughs> I called it the variable. It's just programmer speak, isn't it? Yeah, in DAX, I mean, Brent is a big, big DAX person saying that, you know, VAR there is, and it's heavily used in DAX because the formulas are more complex. Excel, you don't normally write, you know, generally speaking, like huge formulas, do you? Um, <laughs> So I guess it's not so commonplace, but, but who knows, maybe it will. We're all going to jump on the let train, start writing monster formulas. But that'd be easier to read, though, <laughs> with, with let. That's, that's the benefit I see, especially when you put it in with the um, Alt-Enter and you can see all the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't use um, Power Query. But then it looks more like code. And as soon as it starts looking that way, I'm gone. You've lost me. Mm -hmm. Like it could yeah. be exactly the same thing on the one line and I'll fully understand it. But break it down to like subsets of lines. And I just, I just break down with it. I can't. <laughs> My brain will not read them. <laughs> hmm. Not for code, are you? And I'm kind of like that is why I don't like writing code. But when it is something like let, where it just is like the coffee commissions are this line, the tea commissions are this line, the miscellaneous are this line. But yeah, looking at a big wall of code, no, hell no. Any other thoughts, guys? Omo, where's, where's, Omo has some thoughts. <laughs> All right. Who else? Who else? Um, um, no, I, um, well, for work, what I usually use is more of the name function. So this is the first time I've heard of the let function. So, um, yeah, yeah, it looks very interesting because you can bring formulas down into a reduced amount and just do the work rather than trying to, like you said, remember the names of this name, um, oh. name function, the secondary, you know, it, yeah, it's, after a while, it becomes confusing. Yeah. Yes. Or when you go back to the sheet, you'll be wondering, what was I dr drinking when I was building this? <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Patrick is back. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. No, I just decided to unmute for a moment before before I go. Just notice that time is moving on. Um, yeah. For those of us who are working, who do apps for clients, uh, while it's nice to play with the insider edition, uh, 
we can't actually do anything that, that goes out to a client and that's what damn sure mm. every one of them yep. has the same version of Excel. So yeah. uh, my my actual applications tend to be at a rather simpler level than this because it has to work all the way back to Excel um, 2013. Um, at least, thank God, the, the last few people using Excel 2007 have finally up, up, upgraded. Even though there were some very large organizations um, Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's an issue. Yeah. With, with all this stuff, you know, all the, the dynamic arrays and sort and X lookup and mm-hmm. even switch to an extent. Um, yeah. I mean, they're so new, that although they're great, the way we use them, especially if you're de- developing things with clients, as Patrick says, is yeah. I mean, you can't really because you just yeah. don't know. The, yeah. the one thing about that, which currently intrigues me which i haven't i mean i haven't bothered with it because it just seems just uh, no, i would use a, a helper column i'm not going to take care of it but what's occurring to me is you have these scenarios where you can't create a helper column because you need the reference like an array reference within the formula itself uh, but you have to have it more than once so if you're in that, that situation where you have to have something more than once right. and it's too complex or it's, it, it wouldn't work if it was in a cell other than that part of the, of the formula, then let would seem to be useful. Uh, the only thing is I can only use it from, from, from my own work until such time as um, I know it, it, it's out there in, in the world with, uh, with, with clients. But yeah, that's, that's um, something I must try. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Well, so I, I, I'm going to have to go, Alan. Thank you very much for, for stepping in. I'd hate to be in your position, uh, but <laughs> I, give, I, I give my best wishes to Roger. You did yeah. very well, and I don't. Know, did you prepare those examples in just a couple of hours? You had. Well done. <laughs> the the let stuff I did. Yeah, yeah. The switch stuff, I had a switch okay. for that. Great, great. Huh. I had to do a two-minute video for Eurostar today. It took me all day. <laughs> there. Okay, folks. Thank you very much. Right. Good night. Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, guys. Sorry, I've kind of neglected the chat because I was uh, talking today. So Anna we- has something to say. Who's that, sorry? Anna. Hey, what's that? Did she put a hand up or something? No. Is there hands in Teams? Or in Zoom? I don't know, is there? <laughs> <laughs> you just said that she got her hand up. I was like, oh. Yeah, I, just, I didn't know where I was got that from. Why, why do you no, I, I saw a picture pop up. Anyway, Brent, oh. Brent asked if I'm moderating. No, I'm not moderating. No. <laughs> All just likes participating. Done the clock. Which yeah, is- come off come off mute, Brent. Contribute. <laughs> what, what, what Stop being a peeping that? Tom. Jump in. <laughs> I, I, I can jump in. <laughs> Very quiet at the moment, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody does uh, want to say anything, please don't you know, don't be worried about kind of stepping forward. I know it's only a few of us like Oakley, Oz, Paula, and that chatting, but um, yeah, everyone's opinion counts. Feel free to to speak if you want to. Then, if you've got a thought that you want to share, we I mean, don't have to. I'm just saying, yeah, you don't. <laughs> we can sit here and look at each other. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay guys I, I mean if uh nobody's got anything there they kind of want to share discussion wise we can always finish this one a little bit early i know it's a bit of a last minute put together um any thoughts before we think about kind of closing it early yeah good good meeting good meeting yeah. thank you alan cheers thanks guys i agree so thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> uh, two weeks time. Uh, 
I think to the day, is it a Tuesday? When we have a win here for, for Power Crew. You know, Oz mentioned Power Crew a few times there, along with Oakley. So if any of you have not, you know, talking about new things as well, newish, you know, it's not that new. But um, if anyone's not taken the opportunity to get their teeth into Power Query, uh, then come along. <laughs> um, it's been good for you. Everyone needs to know that. It's yes. a no-brainer. Everybody. That one's not up for Beginners, a discussion. Beginners, everybody. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Um, those beginners, like, just being able to split a column by delimiter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they don't need to write M code, but um, so many people do, and just automating something. Mm. Man. So I think of stuff that I used to do over and over and over again. And if I could have just put that stuff into Power Query and hit a button every month, it would have been so helpful. Mm. Yeah. It is absolutely a game changer. Mm. Yes, indeed. Well, I hope the, uh, the children haven't eaten all my biscuits. Mm. That was for dinner? It was biscuits? <laughs> that was it, yeah. I just okay. cut a little hole in the cupboard, put a couple of biscuits in there. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be all right for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, man. I hope we all know I'm joking. You at least put some cat food on the biscuits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, you got to treat your kids right. That's it. Yeah. I don't know that. You have some you have some more child raising advice, Oakley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes beyond Excel these meetups. Oh yeah. <laughs> what does anyone want to know? <laughs> yeah. Two cupboards, that way they don't fight. Right. Yes, yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Power query beyond the basics. Cool. Cheers, Tay. Yeah, and it's a twelve o'clock start. Mm. I know I said at the start, but remember that one, it's a twelve o'clock. Uh, like GMT start to adjust your clocks. Um, I don't know when it falls for you guys, being different to normal. Well, just you know, for, for Europe, it'll be a kind of lunchtime start. But I know for those of you outside Europe, it might be a bit more chaotic. Cool. Cheers, Tanner. There's Oakley's one in the chat. Mm. Pit my spreadsheet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll, we'll close this off if we're all happy. Uh, thanks for your time. Right. Uh, we'll see you again next time. That's right. Great stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. It's been fun.